Okay, we are connecting. I'm gonna click got it. Uh, okay. Yep, go. yep. All right, so I think we're live. Welcome everyone. Good morning. Happy February 2nd. I think today is Groundhog's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows if the groundhog saw his shadow, but it, you know, it never matters, I don't think. <laughs> it never <laughs> matters. <laughs> I feel like whatever the groundhog sees never affects us. So, right. Good morning, Steve Mitchell. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Songs of Psalms. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you for being here, for making time out of your schedule to join us today. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Maria Rivera Jones. I go by MRJ, make it short and simple and sweet for people. And um, I've been doing the songs of Psalms since November of last year. It started as a 30 day songwriting thing and study on the, the book of Psalms. And here we are in February and we're still working on it. And so I'm delighted and I am thrilled to have worship pastor Steve Mitchell with us today. Many of you know him, love him, have followed his ministry for many, many years. And I'm just humbled. I'm humbled to have him here with us today. So thank you for joining us, Steve. It's my pleasure, Maria. My pleasure. Yeah, good to be here. So you just let me know when I'll when I should launch and uh I just yeah. have, I know we're covering Psalm 45 today, right? We are covering Psalm 45, which is um a wedding song. Yes. And the title calls it a wedding song. This is from the sons of Korah. And I love I love reading anything from the son, sons of Korah, but I want you to have the freedom to to speak and teach and, and share whatever it is that God wants you to share with us today. So the floor is yours, my friend. I appreciate that, Maria. Thank you. And, you know, so I just wanted to start with in this particular psalm. This is a beautiful psalm that I've uh, what happens often in the midst of a live worship setting. I'll often uh feel to go to this song spontaneously because it is a it is um it is such a bridegroom bridal triumphant type psalm and you know you could we could talk about this psalm for the next 24 hours and not exhaust it because there's so many levels of of depth and revelation to it but just to start off on this psalm in verse 6 psalm 45 verse 6 uh, it this particular verse and the following verse six and seven is directly quoted in the book of Hebrews, and it's in in the context of its pointing and referring to Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, it says, "Unto the Son," he says, and he is God the Father. God says to the Son, "Your throne, O God, is forever and ever." And he's speaking to Jesus. It's so majestic and beautiful that the Father is actually speaking to Jesus in verse six. And so, you know, David, under you know this this the, the inspiration was given here thousands of years before it, or not maybe not thousands, but a very very long time before it actually took place. So he says, "Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness." And therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Um, I love those two, those those two verses. Again, this is just to lend weight and um, prophetic credibility to this psalm that it's actually pointing at Jesus and referring to Him. And so, if we could just drink some of these verses and drink some of this in this morning um, regarding the beauty of God. And so opening up with the first verse, it says, my heart is overflowing. I'm reading from the New King James, but it says, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. And I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And so just to... Um, let, let's examine this one verse for a second here. When your heart and your your when you are looking to Jesus and you're worshiping Jesus and giving him your attention, your, your heart begins to overflow with 
versus out of emotion and out of love. And then your tongue becomes the pen of a ready writer. And this is exactly how songs are written. Um, songs of Lord are written. Some of the, the, the beautiful worship songs that were written even hundreds of years ago that we still sing today was a result of a worshiper being caught up in the moment and his heart was, or her heart was overflowing with, uh, with worship. And then their tongue became the pen of a ready writer. Inspired writing took place. Mm. And one of the things I've been praying for in this generation and in this season, because very often every move of God has the trademark of songs written during that move. And those songs, they stay for, uh, for, um, for, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Charles Wesley and John Wesley. Um, John was the preacher. Charles was the worshiper. And it's so funny because most people don't remember John's sermons. But Charles Wesley wrote, I believe, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, which we sing now as a, as a Christmas carol. But what, so they, they lived, obviously, they were contemporaries. They lived around the same time. But it's interesting that the song was remembered. And the sermons, by and large, were not, you know. Um, so the song, the songs remain. There's something about songs that are eternal, and uh, and that are they just are forever. So, but it all comes in the moment of inspiration as you're caught up with the Lord, and your your um your tongue becomes the pen of a ready writer, and and then these songs will will uh will. will they, they, they move from heaven into the earth, and they're meant to bless people and to encourage songs of, in fact, I, I had to share this. I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 32. We don't have to go there, but I wanted to, to say this. God himself writes an entire song, and I think it's two, chap, two chapters long, 32, 33, something like that, and he hands it to Moses, and he says, sing this over the nation of Israel. And contained in that song is Israel's prophetic destiny through for over a period of, of hundreds, if not, I believe, even maybe thousands of years from that day forward. So it talks about how much God loves Israel. It talks about how Israel would disobey. It talks about how there would be judgment for it and correction and chastening and on and on and on. And God just spells out the unfolding destiny of a whole nation in a song, in a song. And so it really is pretty spectacular that, and, I, and, I, and it's, it's interesting that almighty God would use something that is so, I guess you could say almost silly as a song to really um, speak to a generation, an entire generation. But if you think about this passage, he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And so, and so, and this, this Psalm 45 is, happens to be another one that it, it is, there's something very bridegroom and majestic about this Psalm. And I just wanted to look at a few more of these um, verses. It says, you are fairer or more beautiful. This is, again, written to the bridegroom, written to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are more beautiful than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. And I love this. Grace is poured upon your lips, which means when he speaks, his words are filled with grace. Grace activates us and awakens us and um, encourages us and moves us. Grace is poured upon his lips. So it says, gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one. Now, I have used this passage in intercession. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And what you're calling for is for the bridegroom to come to the rescue. Mm -hmm. And it is a song of intercession and a call from the people of God that the bridegroom would come to the rescue. So when we say these words and sing these words, 
gird your sword upon your side, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty, and come to the rescue. And, and, and he says, in your majesty, ride prosperously because of truth. For this, in other words, for the sake of truth, humility, and righteousness. And so you're calling for the bridegroom to come gloriously, majestically to the rescue. And I've done this uh, in intercession. I felt inspired to do this when something is happening even nationally or globally that's taking place where there is a sense of, a, if, if I'm sensing an injustice that's taking place or something, you, you, you know, I call upon this passage and I sing this passage. And, uh, and so, and, but on a side note, I just wanted to say a sister passage or a sister chapter to this chapter happens to be Revelation 19, which they're so, in, to, in my estimation, as long as I've been um, studying these, these passages, there's always been such a correlation between Psalm 45 and Revelation 19. And uh, in fact, just, just so you can see some of the, some of the parallels in Revelation 19, verse 11, it says, I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. And it goes on and on, and from his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron, and he himself treads the winepress and the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God, speaking of judgment. So this does paint a picture of him coming in judgment, um, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And uh, again, there seems to be such a correlation between the he's the bridegroom king, but he's also the judge. And it is to me, it's so majestic and so glorious. Um, but uh, and I just want to say on a side note, Marie, if you if you have any any comments or questions, feel free to jump in. But um because I could go on and on forever, you know, this, please, please. The floor is yours. <laughs> it, this, okay. is, this is so incredibly stirring. So please continue. Okay. Yeah. And so in, we're in verse four and it says in your majesty ride prosperously because for this, and especially if you really look at what's happening in the earth now, you know, it's, it's difficult for us to interpret um, because I think a lot of times, unfortunately, everything has become so tribal out there and you're either in this camp or you're in that camp. And so sometimes you interpret circumstances and situations and what's happening in the world through the lens of your own tribe or the lens of your own ideology, you know? So, and I try to, I try to leave all of that to God, you know, and especially when I'm in an inner, when I'm in prayer and intercession and things like that. But with what's happening now, I mean, listen, there's always injustice in the earth. There's always injustice somewhere on planet earth, but I think it's probably more intense right now and more magnified than it's, than it's ever been because, and I'll tell you why, it's, it's more intense to us because of social media, because of, of access, you know, to the internet, access to the news. Even when I was a kid, just, you know, 30, 35 years ago when I was a kid, um, we didn't have 24 seven news cycles. You know, it was just, if you wanted to watch the news, you had an hour window or at the most, maybe a two hour window at night to watch the news. And that was it. There was no iPhones. There was nothing, no, no um, iPads. So we weren't as plugged in to global events and, and politics, you know, as everybody is now, but, but maybe, you know, I, I tend to believe that all things work together for good all things work together for good for those who love God. And, and so I believe even the technology that we have through social media, iPhones, iPads, and so forth, maybe, it, maybe it's meant for the church to be engaged in, in intercession and prayer, as long as we can detach from being tribal, from yeah. our own ideology and so on. And we can, you know, the, the, so, and we can intercede objectively with the, with the with the with the eyes of God on this on the situation and on the circuit with compassion and so on so anyway I just wanted to throw that out because uh 
I mean, I know what it's like for people to watch the news and feel frustrated and stuff and feel, you know, discouraged sometimes and so on. Um, but, um, but there is a much, much bigger tapestry that God is weaving. And even circumstances that look daunting and dark and negative, God is using to weave an enormous tapestry. I mean, if we truly believe, as he said, be still and know that I am God. If we believe that he's God, then we do believe that he's sovereign and that he's in control. And so, you know, having said that, um, I'm going to just read a verse to you. And you don't have to go there, but it's in Genesis chapter 50. And it's a pretty amazing verse. Um, it was just a quick synopsis, a quick backdrop. Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob, was thrown into a pit and rejected and cast away by his brothers. And then he was sold. He became a slave. He spent years in a dungeon as a prisoner. And then God, God exalted him to be in a way, the vice president of the United States, because he became second to Pharaoh, second to the king. And but here's a fascinating insight into this. In chapter 50, verse 20, watch this. Joseph was speaking to his brothers. And there was reconciliation between him and his family and his brothers. He said, what you meant for evil against me. God meant for good in order to bring it about as it is this day so my point is there are things that even are happening perhaps in your life that look dark and they look evil but because god is god and because he's sovereign and so incredibly in control of all circumstances even the big circumstances and the little circumstances He's so in control that what is meant to be evil against you, God is actually meaning it to bring good in your life. So I say that to breathe in the name of God, to breathe hope into your heart, hope that even though it looks troublesome and disturbing and it's creating maybe anxiety. And I'm not just talking about the politics. And I'm talking about what's happening in your life personally right now. And what is maybe creating anxiety, creating trouble. God is meaning for it to produce and create good. That very thing that's troubling you. That very thing that you feel is oppressing you. Because God is God. And because God loves you, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's fully and completely in control. He's using it for good. And I looked up the Hebrew word, but it says, when, when Joseph was speaking to his brothers, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. The word meant, like your intentions, it's the same Hebrew word. So the, that, And so I say that to point out that the very thing that is in your life troubling you, disturbing you, you can almost, if you see this, if you catch this revelation, and I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you, you can actually laugh and, and, and be happy about it because that very thing God is sovereign and in control of, and he's meaning it to produce good in your life. And, and peace in your life, you know? So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and that is I, good. That is good. And I, and I know that that is encouraging everyone that is listening. So thank you for that. That is so good. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you're quite welcome. Um, I, I've, um, I've actually been studying that type of thing. And it's really the, the providence of God, the sovereignty of God, because if we truly believe, and we do, we, we, we believe that God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He is omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. And he's omnipresent, which means he's 
everywhere, you know, then, then we have to believe, we have to believe that the circumstances in our lives, the, the, the big ones that seem so large and mountains, and even the little ones that are troublesome, these circumstances in our lives, God has dominion over, and he is sovereign over these circumstances. Nothing, nothing happens without his permission. Nothing. Even if you look at the book of Job um, and how God allowed Satan to torment Job, Job had to get permission to do anything. I'm sorry, not Job, I'm rather Satan. Satan had to get permission to do anything to Job. He was not allowed to do a single thing to Job without permission. So, so in other words, darkness or the enemy or bad circumstances, no, none of that happens in your life without God's permission. He knows exactly, God knows. And I love this passage in Corinthians. It says, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond beyond your ability to endure or withstand it. So, so whatever it is you're experiencing, now watch this, whatever you're experiencing, God knows you can handle it. He knows you can handle it. He knows you've got this. And it's not so much that you're handling it by yourself because none of us, I don't want to handle anything by myself. I don't want to go through any circumstance or situation by myself. I need to know God is with me, that he's present. And so I, I, I do get that. And of course, we understand God is with us and so on. But um, he said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And, um, and all those passages. But so um, I just wanted to, to share that with you, because it, it, I guess it, it, as much as I love Psalm 45, that truth keeps emerging in me about the sovereignty of God. And I, and this is another passage that really speaks to that. It's, I think it's Matthew 10, 29, but it says, it says the sparrows, you can get five of them for two cents or something like that. How, how, in other words, they're worthless to human beings. They're practically worthless. But Jesus said these words, not one of them is forgotten, mm. or falls to the ground without, without the knowledge and the permission of the father, <laughs> you know, I mean, and that should give us an incredible amount of comfort. And if you really ponder and meditate on these things, it'll even create a joy in your life to go through life. Um, understanding that you're in the father's care. And that, that verse I just uh, paraphrased in Matthew 10, 29 really to me speaks to the sovereignty of God you know when you consider how many millions and millions of sparrows there are on planet earth and so most of them a sparrow is born it lives it dies without us even knowing but it but the father all of that doesn't it not or I should say none of that happens without his knowledge and permission and he sees that and so, and so, you know, of course, I love Jesus's words when he talked about how God feeds the sparrows and feeds the ravens and so on. And so anyway, I just wanted to say that just to comfort you. But if we could just go back to Psalm 45 one more time, um, in verse 7, uh, it says, God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions, all your garments are scented with myrrh. I love this in verse eight, all your garments are scented with, this is again, speaking to the bridegroom, to Jesus, the bridegroom king, all your garments are scented with myrrh, aloes and cassia. And so there is a fragrance to Jesus, a fragrance. And when we um, when we gather together in worship gatherings, there has been times where people have testified like they can actually pick up a, a scent of fragrance in the worship, a sweet scent and a sweet fragrance, you know, and I believe that has to do with this passage, that his garments are scented when the presence 
of God becomes very strong in a gathering, you can pick up on that fragrance and that scent of Jesus. And it just, it, to me, it's a healing fragrance. It's like a healing scent it heals my soul and it even strengthens and invigorates my body, you know? So um, all of your garments are scented. And, and lastly, I wanted to just bring it to the, the very last verse. And I love this passage in verse 17, the father God is saying to the son, God, I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. And there's a key here because the, the word name, I will make your name to be remembered. In Proverbs, it says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. His name is his reputation. His name is his reputation. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. And so that is an eternal promise from God. And his name, again, is his reputation. And, and the, the, the verse finishes with, therefore, the people shall praise you forever and ever. So I'm praying, and I know that we're, we're, we're kind of winding down in this session. I'm praying that in this generation, the one that we are presently living in, that his name, his reputation would once again be proclaimed, be proclaimed in all the earth. But I wanted to speak to the Northeast, the Northeastern part of the United States, even, even the entire East Coast. And guess what? The East Coast of the United States contains Washington, D.C. So we are praying that on the East Coast of this United States, that the name of the Lord, in fact, you and I, Maria, and those watching right now, here we stand in the cleft of the rock. Mm. We stand in the cleft of the rock, and we are asking that, God, you would proclaim your name and that you would cause all of your goodness to pass by the eastern coast of the United States of America, including Washington, D.C., and that your name would be proclaimed, oh God, in all the earth, and that your name would once again be made famous and honored and respected and feared, Lord God, among all nations. Oh God, proclaim your name. We are asking, we are asking that you would proclaim your name. Um, and I wanted to say, Maria, one other thought that just came to mind. In the four gospels, the only prayer that Jesus prayed, now watch this, that actually had an audible response from the Father, the only prayer he prayed was, glorify your name and then it says that there was an audible sound a voice that came from heaven those that were with jesus thought that that, that it was a thunderclap some people thought it was an angel that's how much i believe god responds to that prayer glorify your name and that's what we just essentially just prayed so everyone watching just agree with us and and we th we thank you for that agreement amen, amen. Uh, maria wow. oh back to you <laughs> i'm at a loss for words my friend this was so deep and so rich and so profound that it I, it's like we we need to just keep this going <laughs> yeah we need to keep this going i love this and i love what you just said i love what you just said about the the northeast and yeah. and proclaiming the name of Jesus, because yes, yeah. there's, we we are privileged to live in this part of the United States where so much is happening with New York so close to us and being the capital of of the world in terms of financial stability and, and all of that. Yeah. Um, but to proclaim the name of Jesus on this day, February 2nd, right? It's powerful. Yeah. Vicky says, I agree. Glorify your name. Amen. Marilyn says, we agree in the name of Jesus. Amen. We proclaim your name. Pilar says, yes and amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah. thank you, Steve. This was so profound. Uh, everyone that's been on Songs of Psalms, I've already invited them back, and I would love to invite you back um Absolutely. for another another opportunity for you to share because you you share from such a a deep perspective and you truly understood this psalm 
You yeah. I felt like the Lord really set this up for you to speak. So I thank you. I thank you yeah. for being willing to, to be able. I don't think I, I would have done any justice to this psalm if I had spoken on it and taught on it. But having you here teach, this was profound. And I really, really am so grateful. Um, I need to go back and listen to it over and over to this particular <laughs> teaching um, because there was so much in here. And and I know with your ministry, you lift up the name of Jesus strongly yeah. and boldly in your worship services. And so I, I do believe that the Lord handpicked this psalm for you to teach. So yeah, thank you for that. Do you yeah. have any parting words before we log off here today? Um, Any encouragement for the people? Yeah. Um, um, just, you know what? I just wanted to say this, that it's it's just throughout the course of your day, as you go throughout your day today and, and even every day, um, it's, it's a very, just take, you know, throughout the course of the day, have an inward awareness. As often as you can remember, have an inward awareness that God is with you and that God loves you and that God smiles on you. He doesn't only love you. It actually says in, in John's gospel, the father himself, it, it, the, the, it says in the King James love, but the Greek word is phileo, which is more of he likes you. He doesn't only love you, but he likes you and takes pleasure, takes pleasure in you. And so just have, an inward awareness throughout the course of your day, as often as you can remember. And you can even, if you're maybe not with people, you can say softly, God loves me. God likes me. God takes pleasure in me. Just say those words over yourself. Amen. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we bless you guys that are watching. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. May the Lord just uh strengthen you and give back to you a thousandfold for mm -hmm. all that you pour out for the people of god because we know that your your love for god it just comes right back out to show his love for his people so thank you for that thank you for serving him in that capacity and again i would love to have you back here another opportunity that you have yes. Um, we can go deeper. I would love um, at some point we've we've launched the worship center in Patterson and we're going to have some worship training and teachings and classes. I would love to invite you to that, but we can talk offline off for that because I do believe yeah. that God is doing something and he is equipping his people in this season and this era. He's truly equipping his people and preparing the bride so that we could be ready for his return. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, I agree. Amen. So we, yeah. we will talk more about that at some point. Sounds um, good. But we want to just bless you guys that are watching and those that are catching this on the replay. We just pray the blessing of Aaron, which is the blessing of God over you. The Lord bless you and keep yeah. you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and be gracious to you. And the Lord give you shalom. His presence. Yeah peace his completeness amen. and wholeness in jesus name amen all right thank you my friend amen Blessings thank you to everyone God all bless. right have a great day guys ciao ciao bye bye